So, just got back in the house. I want to do some photography. And I want to take you through what I do in a day of going to take some photos. So the basics that I need to uh, go out and take photos pretty much is camera, lens, spare battery, SD cards. This is pretty much all I'm going to use. Now we're packed. It is pretty much as simple as get on my motorbike and go to where I need to go. So I'm just going to chuck all my stuff on and I'll meet you out there. So what I'm going to go over today basically is what camera settings I use, um, how I like to compose my shots, um, and just little things that I can think of along the way, tips, tricks, stuff like that. Oh, it's muddy, man. Um, something, I don't know, anything I can think of that will maybe help someone else when they're trying to take photos of wildlife or anything in nature. But yeah, once I'm where I want to be, We'll start talking about like the little things that I look at and what I try and do to make it better. See ya. I'll catch you in a bit. There's a massive heron going over the pool. I don't know whether you can see it. It's really hard to see. And this isn't going to zoom very well, but... There's the heron. <laughs> Get your cat. I wonder if it was eating something. Just more litter. So we're getting close. Yeah, it's quite grim where I go to take photos. It's a motorway bridge. A massive pylon but for some reason well saying that there's not much green around these areas so I'm guessing the animals just go wherever they can There's actually a heron where I sit and do my photos. <laughs> so this is my spot. It's grim, it's dirty. I'm sure there's probably homeless people around, but This is my spot. It's kind of funny that one of the last times I was here, there's all this water down by my feet and I dropped my GoPro battery in there, but luckily it still works. So yeah, if I try and... This is where I like to uh, photograph. Right, let's start looking at some settings. This actually isn't the best place at the minute, thinking about it. The light's shining this way. So the first thing I like to look for is where's the light coming from? Now if I'm shooting out over there, the light's coming in this way, it's not gonna be the best. Uh, I don't know what else I can get. There actually isn't. Oh well, we'll just have to do with what we can. 
Right, let's get the camera, get the camera ready. That's all we can find. So now the first thing I really want to do is put the battery in, check the SD cards are clean, which I already checked to be honest before I come out. Um, put those in, take a couple of test photos, just make sure that everything's working okay. And then I'll start going into the settings. So, got my camera, just took a couple of the test shots, everything seems to be working okay, batteries in and everything, so all I've done so far is put it onto the running man setting, which is basically uh, shutter speed priority for fast moving objects, really good for wildlife. What I'll do is I'll take some photos with this, check out the light, if this seems to work for me I tend to stick with it, because it's an auto setting. If not, I will go into manual, um, but I don't like doing that because conditions can change and it's a lot like it takes a lot of time to change the settings each time. You want to compose another shot, and animals don't wait around. So, best setting that I do I do find is the um, the fast setting on your camera that's automatically uh, calibrated, like it automatically does the settings for you. So yeah, that's pretty much it for now. I'm just gonna take some photos and see what I come up with. I can see a few heron over the far side, so let's see what it'd help if I put auto focus on. Yeah, don't try and do manual focus when you're photographing fast animals, it don't work. They're all over in the same area. Really hard to see. I can't remember what this other bird's called, I'll put it in the description or something, or I'll just I'll tag it in a sec. Um, so yeah, there's some cool birds. I think I can't remember the name, it's going to bug the out of me. Do you know what I just thought? I'm wearing a baseball cap while I'm using my hand. That's better. Now I can see. And it's pretty much just a waiting game. Some little kids jumping. I mean, the chances of me getting this are going to be extremely, <laughs> extremely soon, but... There's some kids jumping. Trying to catch all the flies. So let's go over some tips. Um, the first one is going to be find a location where you know there's animals that you want to photograph because it makes it a hell of a lot easier and you don't have to wait around or search or be walking as far for as long. It saves a lot of energy. So I tend to come to places where I've, what I tend to do is I'll go for a walk with my fiance first. Uh, if I see cool stuff, I'll go back and photograph. Sometimes I take my camera on the day, it depends how I feel. But I don't necessarily go places knowing that there's gonna be animals there. I always try and, more fish jumping. I always try and um, know where they are before I take my camera, because it's less of a waste of time. So yeah, that's my first tip is, know your location, know what you wanna take photographs of. My second tip is, know your light. Now I messed up today a little bit. <laughs> because the light's right in front of me and it's actually facing me so I could photograph myself quite nicely but it's not going to happen but um, yeah, so know your light, know where the light's going to come up and go down and try and get the perfect pictures that way so if I was photographing down there I'd probably get okay pictures because the sun's shining down there, it's not face on um, so that'd work out but unfortunately animals don't cooperate and they are right there somewhere over there so yeah they're not cooperating for me at the minute but hey ho so yeah that's my top tip number two check where your lights coming from and try and make sure that you got all the light facing on your subject because it will light it up if you try and take a photo of a bird in flight and you got the sun behind them all you're gonna get is a silhouette and it won't be that good whereas if you have the sun behind you facing the bird you get lots of detail lots of quality it's a really cool picture i'll see if i can like add photos in as i'm talking about this to give examples um second tip so get as close as you can make it as easy as you can for your camera so obviously i've got a nice zoom lens but you don't always have zoom lenses available and stuff like that so Get as close to your animals as possible without disturbing them and without breaking the law and going over fences that you shouldn't go over. 
So yeah, just get as close as you can. It makes it a lot easier and you get better quality photos as well. Your kit, I wanna say that you don't need a zoom lens, but in my experience, you kinda of do. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a 600 millimeter like mine. Um, I think you could get away with a 300 millimeter or you could probably get away with less as well and just use extension tubes. Uh, I've seen a lot of setups like that, but I haven't used them myself. Um, so yeah, get as close as you can, use the equipment to get as close as you can. And then when you're taking photos, the settings is you want a fast shutter speed. Well, not always, but generally for wildlife you want a fast shutter speed. And what it'll do is it'll freeze the animal in the picture. And uh, with with animals like birds, if you, have, if you don't have a fast shutter speed, the wings get all blurry when you're trying to take photos. Now you can use that creatively to make a creative blurry photo but generally with wildlife you're trying to capture the moment of what it's doing so if it's jumping in the water you want to freeze it as it's entering the water and you get all the droplets coming up and stuff like that um, so yeah high shutter speed um, with a high shutter speed less light gets in the camera so you need to try and well if it's on auto you ain't got to worry about it but I try and keep the ISO as low as possible so if I know there's purposeful things that I'm trying to take photos of I check the light that I've got because the, the better the sun is the lower your ISO the better the quality some big fish jumping around I think so yeah light really important makes the quality of the image better high shutter speed makes the image quality better when you're taking photos of wildlife, in my opinion. Um, top tip number four, always be prepared. <laughs> so bring an extra SD, bring an extra battery, bring some food in case you get hungry, things like that. Um, that's a top tip as well. Um, I think, for now, that's all I can think of. It seems that way anyway. But yeah, know your location, know your animals, know your camera, know how close you need to get, and know your light. Light's very important. I hope I haven't rambled too much. So we've got a few pictures. A um, couple in flight, I think, maybe, and then just some like statuesque pictures. Wish I could catch one of these fish jumping. It's not going to happen, but I wish I could. Uh, but unfortunately, it's starting to go a little bit overcast, so I'm just going to move now, have a walk back, and see if there's anything on the other side. If there isn't, I am actually just going to head back. I wouldn't normally head back, but I thought, you know what, I can probably make a start on like editing this video and everything. I don't know if you can see this. There is a massive ghost carp here. I just saw it. There is. So yeah, as I was saying, it's getting really overcast. I don't even think I'm gonna stop on the other side. Oh, that fish is still here. That's cool. Um, yeah, I'm not even gonna go stop on the other side, just in case it rains. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just going to pack up now, walk back over, go back home. That's, my, that, that's how close he is. Oh. Somewhere there. There's another stuff over there. So yeah, I'm just going to head back and then see what we can do.
So I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, please click subscribe and like the video. And I will have another video coming up of how I edited these photos. That's me out.